Welcome to Madrid, the capital city of Spain, on a picture-perfect day. Two teams left standing for a FIBA world title, the championship game between Serbia and Team USA. Kevin Connors, Fran Fraschilla, thrilled to be with you. Two very different paths to this title game for these two teams, Fran. United States has dominated their first eight opponents. Serbia, however, in the last three games against quality teams has been playing outstanding. Scoring margin of plus 17. Moments ago, our Mark Stein spoke with Derek Rose. It doesn't happen often like this back home where we get a one-game scenario where your team is such a big favorite. You know there's going to be a lot of criticism on the other side if you guys don't deliver. What's it like to carry all of that onto the court? You no, know, it's no pressure at all. We know what we have to do, and we know when we get out there that it's one goal, and that's to go out there and win the game by any means. Um, we know that we play well together. We just got to come out aggressive in the first, first half and try to pull them away. Thanks, Derek. Now, Derek Rose and Team USA eyeing its second straight FIBA World Championship. Fran, the heartbeat of this Serbian team is Milos Teodosic. He will get the brunt of Team USA's defensive coverage early, but don't discount Stefan Markovic gives them that other ball handler with which to take off the pressure. Six U.S. players come into this game averaging in double figures, but the key today may well be the defense of Kyrie Irving. Well, starting, I think he's going to start on Taya Dosich. There'll be a couple people that get a piece of him, including Kay Thompson, Clay Thompson, but I look for Irving to get him early. 62 consecutive wins for Team USA in international competition. Fran, for Schilly, your keys to the game. Coach Georgievich has been studying Team USA. I believe they'll go at Harden and Curry early. And Team USA, interestingly, was built to guard inside, but Serbia's big guy sets every ball screen. And the head coach of Serbia, Sasa Djordjevic, may be raising some eyebrows before the game, saying until they show us for 40 minutes, they, meaning Team USA, are the better team. I am not going to say they are the better team. Serbia is very proud of its basketball tradition, and they are relishing this moment today. Country of seven million people, Basketball is extremely important to the culture. FIBA eyeing its first World Cup medal since 2002. We know they will do that. Of course, for Team USA, a shot at its fifth FIBA World Cup gold medal. The winner of this game gets the lone automatic bid to the Rio Olympics. The officials in this game from Canada, France, and Ukraine. Team USA has not lost in this tournament. Every win coming by at least 20 points. Serbia something of an upset pick to get to this championship game. Anthony Davis will jump it up with Miroslav Radulica and the championship game of the FIBA World Cup of Basketball is underway. Serbia is virtually all man to man. Kenneth Fareed, free throw line jumper breaks the ice. They want to give him that shot, and he stepped up and made it. Now for Serbia, keep your eye on the five-man, Radulica, because he sets every ball screen. Nice feed from Teodosic to Nikola Kalinic. Remember, Kevin, Team USA was built to guard the Gasols in the final. Coach K kept the big guys on this roster, but today Davis and Cousins are going to have to defend pick and roll 25 feet away from the basket. Brand, what's the objective offensively for Team USA? Spread the floor, attack with your athleticism, get stops on defense, and get a transition game going. Here is Kalinic. How about Serbia offensively? What do they want to do? They are as good as any team in FIBA in this tournament at spreading you out with five defenders. Teja Dosic turns it over, and then he's called for the foul on Anthony Davis. The team comparisons, and it goes without saying, Team USA is the overwhelming favorite. Well, they are. Uh, they have blitzed every opponent, much like we expected when this tournament started. Serbia, don't be fooled by two and three. They're playing their best. Teja Dosic was hurt early with an ankle issue. He's playing his best basketball right now. Anthony Davis, elbow jumper off the mark. I think if you coach Georgievich, you don't mind Fareed and Davis shooting those jumpers early. Now watch the red shirts and how much they extend Team USA away from the basket. 
All the way to the basket is Taya Dosic. Take a look now. They do a terrific job of making Team USA, at least they'll try to today, defend side to side, and that's going to open up the driving lanes for Taya Dosic. Team USA trying to run some half-court offense. They haven't been able to get into it yet. Serbia has switched well on the perimeter. Here's Harden drawing a foul and an opportunity to complete the three-point play. Well, James Harden has done this all tournament. He's, if you give him a crack, he's hard to keep out of the lane, and he's also very good at uh, initiating contact with the defender. Foul called on Nikola Kalinic. His first second team foul on Serbia. James Harden, 13.1 points per game for Team USA in this tournament. And the U.S. regains the lead. Watch, Kevin. Markovic brings it up sometimes, and it's just then to get the ball. Nice inside. Good execution early. Miroslav Radulica plays his pro ball. At least he did last season in the NBA with the Milwaukee Bucks. You don't want to give Serbia offensive confidence early in the game. Here's Fareed, too strong, and the rebound to Markovic. Markovic handling the ball takes the pressure off of Teodosic. Whistle and a foul, and I think they got Steph Curry for the hole. Curry and Harden have been in foul trouble. I talked to some coaches who've talked, who talked to uh, Coach Kozlowskis and the Lithuanian coaches, their game plan was to go at Harden and Curry early. Same thing with Coach Georgievich. And off the set inbound, they'll get James Harden on the push. So two team fouls for each one of the teams. And you said that the guards for Team USA, friend, need to stay out of foul trouble. Well, they do. And I also think these three officials will call a lot of fouls early to try to keep control of this game. And on cue, yet another foul. Yep. And that's on Anthony Davis, and that is the second foul on Davis. This is exactly the script that Coach Georgievich wanted. Watch Davis. He's going to hold Radulitsa across the lane. Now Cousins is going to have to defend pick and roll away from the basket. Did a good job that time on Taya Dosic. Down to five to shoot. Along the baseline, there's Bielica throwing it in. This is not a surprise early, the way Serbia has spread the court. Cousins, good position down low, but he missed a chip shot. Bielica in the paint all the way, and Serbia out to a five-point lead. We've seen this kind of defense from Team USA from time to time. Not focused, too many breakdowns. A whistle and a foul, and they call it on uh, Bielitsa, I believe. Brand Derek Rose said no pressure for Team USA coming in. Do you believe that? No, I really don't. We saw, we saw Spain crack under the pressure of being at home. And what you have to do if your Team USA is stay focused because Serbia's job in a game like this as the overwhelming underdog is to just play five minutes at a time and stay close. Get into the third quarter with a chance to win and put the pressure on Team USA to crack a little bit. Think Patriots-Giants in the Super Bowl when the Patriots came in, came in undefeated. Well, they have just called a foul on DeMarcus Cousins. That is now three fouls drawn on USA Bigs by Miroslav Radulice in the first three minutes and 16 seconds of this game. Time out on the floor. Serbia out to the five-point lead. Kevin Connors, Fran Fraschilla, delighted to be with you. Serbia, the five-point lead early on. Before we went to break, they changed the foul. It's on Kenneth Fareed, so the first, but Fran, already Team USA in some foul trouble. Yes, they are, and uh, Coach K talked about this in that Lithuania game where they fouled way too much in the first half. Here's Teja Dosic, left open. It's a seven-point Serbia lead. Serbia 
playing with a lot of poise so far. Good execution of their offense. Good ball movement by Team USA. Harden has to fight for it. Last touched by Markovic. No change of possession, so the shot clock will remain. But watch Markovic, Harden going for this loose ball. Team USA called that timeout last time, Fran. What's the message in the huddle? I think Coach K is just trying to calm him down a little bit. You know what I like about that right there? Serbia's scouting report was very good early. They kept the ball away from the perimeter players of Team USA. Sometimes you have to junk the scouting report, spread it out, and go to your strengths. And Irving's ability to get to the lane is a strength of his. See, Irving's guarding Taya Dosic. Drops it off. Opportunity for a three-point play for Radulica. They can't keep Taya Dosic out of the lane. When he's at his best, he's as good at passing as there is at, uh, really anybody in the war world, Kevin. In terms of pick and roll, he's as good as it gets. He's right there with Nash, with Chris Paul, with some of the other great pick and roll point guards. Miroslav Radulica completes the three-point play, and the Serbian lead is eight. They are seven of seven from the field to start. See, they're playing shutout on Curry and Harden if they can. Here's Harden drawing another foul. He's so good at that, Fran. He's done it throughout this tournament. They worked hard to make him get the ball that he was able to get to the lane. Two fouls on Anthony Davis, one apiece on Harden, Fareed, and Cousins. That's something of an early storyline. And it's not shocking in international competition in any way to see the officials playing a role. No question, especially early in a game. They want to establish control of the game both ways. Both teams can play chippy. And uh, I'll remind you of 2008 when Team USA played Spain in the gold medal game. LeBron got a quick two. Uh, D. Wade got a quick two. Coach K had to make some adjustments. Curry guarding Taya Dosich now. And now Cousins bats it off the rim, and you can do that in feeble play. We've seen Serbia, that being a strength of this team. They've been so good at knocking balls off the rim as Harden tries a three. That's huge. Transition. Team USA's offensive stuff is simple. So what you have to do is spread it out and allow these guys to make some plays. Big time blocked by Cousins that time, and he's fouled by Nikola Kalinic. Well, we remind you that Monday Night Football brings you a meeting between a pair of division champs as we take another look at the defense by Cousins. Really nice job by DeMarcus Cousins. Davis in foul trouble. He has to be very active because he's got to play the rim. He's also got to play the pick and roll on the perimeter. Well, two fouls apiece now on Taya Dosic and Kalinic. As we remind you, Monday Night Football brings you a meeting between two reigning division champs. Eagles and Colts have at it tomorrow, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Second free throw will not count a violation on Team USA. Brand five minutes in, what have you seen from both teams? Well, I think Serbia has established a nice tempo. They've also done a good job, quite frankly, of spreading Team USA out because we talked about that being their strength and getting some easy shots at the rim. Team USA is explosive. Couple stops, couple turnovers, and they can open up a run. Nadat Kristic in the game for Serbia as Bielica misfired on the three. Team USA now in the midst of a 7-0 run. Make it 9-0. Yeah. I like that. And I like the fact that Irving went at Teja Dosic. One of the things you do with Teja Dosic is you make him defend because that's not his strength. He's a conscientious objector on that end of the floor. Off the penetration, Nanat Kristic missing from in close and another rebound for DeMarcus Cousins. See if Irving does it again. Pull up three for Kyrie Irving. 
Explosive, Kevin. That's what we said. Couple stops. We talked about him needing to be a defensive stopper. He's got seven points. Bielitsa drops it off. Kristich unable to finish from in close again. Two big misses by Kristich, who's playing this tournament hurt. Irving all the way. He's taken over this first quarter, Team USA, by six. Team USA in the midst of a 14-0 run in the last two minutes and seven seconds. And Fran Fraschilla, we talked about foul trouble for Team USA. It's impacting Serbia as well. Well, it really has. You see, DeMarcus Cousins has been outstanding on the defensive end, but I love what Kyrie Irving has done. When Teja Dosic picked up his second foul, he's gone right at him. He's got the last seven USA points, but the big fella has really done his job at the rim with Anthony Davis in foul trouble. Yeah, two fouls for Anthony Davis early on, and DeMarcus Cousins, who has been maligned throughout the course of his professional career, he's really done a terrific job buying into the Mike Krzyzewski, Jerry Colangelo Team USA system, Fran. No, he really has. He wanted to be on this team. Some people thought it was touch and go, but to his credit, that should be an illegal screen. Now they will call it on Rudy Gay, who you heard Todd Grisham mention in the pregame, suffered a facial injury, and Mike Krzyzewski wants an explanation. Now watch, I, th I think Kristich moved the hip. Uh, that's, see, that's an illegal screen. But I like, we talked about this at the beginning, you can't let Serbia play with confidence, and in this last two minutes, Team USA has taken that confidence away just a little bit with that 14-0 run. Bielitsa to the free throw line. Nemanja Bielitsa plays for Fenerbahce Ulker in the Turkish League, averaging better than 11 points per game in this tournament. Second round pick in 2010 of the Washington Wizards, traded right away to Minnesota. Knocks down ball. Yeah, Rudy Gay had a chance to bat that ball off the rim. Watch Irving now. Kyrie Irving quietly has had an exceptional tournament. He's been very efficient. Here's Boogie Cousins. Knocks down the 18-footer. See, that's the calculated risk. They've done a good job on the perimeter, but they've let the bigs from USA shoot it. Fareed's made a jumper, and now Cousins has made a foul line jumper. But you have to give up something if you're Coach Georgievich. Well, Harden's late on that, see? Man. You must rotate to the rim if you're James Harden. You could smell that slip screen coming from a mile away. Nadat Kristic, maybe the most familiar member of this Serbian team to American basketball fans, former New Jersey Net, Oklahoma City Thunder, and Boston Celtic. Here's Irving. He's feeling it. How about this? How about this? He's making his threes at a high rate. He's getting to the rim, and he's going to leave Madrid with increased confidence. And he was the NBA's All-Star Game MVP. It's not like he needs a lot. Bielitsa off the drive. Three-pointer on the way for Bogdanovich. Uh, Team USA, great pick-and-roll defense. They forced the ball down. Harden took it right at the Elites. His second effort by Gay is contested. Wow. And a three out of the wow. corner by Clay Thompson. Talk about unconscious. That's one of those in college. Coach K would say, no, no, pull it out. Nice shot. Clay Thompson's having a fabulous tournament as well, especially on the defensive end. Kristich working on Cousins, spins baseline, but he stepped out of bounds. As we see Mason Plumley and Derek Rose check into the game for the first time, and Brand Team USA has really turned it, uh, turned it around with aggressiveness on the offensive end. Uh, no question, but watch this little handoff. Clay Thompson, corner three. Good rhythm shot. Well, Team USA has certainly been a team of runs. And this run at the end of the first half has done a little bit to destroy that confidence Serbia had early. Hey. 
Jovic drops it off. Semanovic unable to finish. Quietly, nice help by Plumley. Rudy Gay gets to the rim, and the U.S. with a 13-point lead. Here's Stefan Jovic into the paint. Last touch by Serbia. I thought it was knocked out of bounds by Team USA. And a look at, at Team USA has struggled usually in the first quarter, Fran, but not tonight. No. They caught fire halfway through. Kyrie Irving really has been the catalyst, and he continues to be the catalyst. This is impressive. 15 points. He's 6 of 7 from the field. And the <laughs> USA lead is 16. Well, any hope Serbia had of slowing Team USA down is going by the weights, wayside at this point. Bogdanovic, no, tipped up and in by Jovic as the first quarter comes to an end. Serbia led it 15 to 7, but the U.S. closing the first quarter in a big way. Chilla, back with you. The final of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Team USA closed that first quarter on a 28-6 run as Serbia starts the second quarter on a Bogdanovic miss. Fran Kyrie Irving was just electric in the final six minutes of that first quarter. Well, he's been very consistent throughout this tournament. One of those guys that's made his threes. Take a look. The numbers are good. This is not a uh, surprise tonight, but getting Team USA off in the first quarter as quickly as he did really did a hammer job on Serbia's confidence after the opening couple minutes. A couple of fouls called early on Milos Teodosic, the heartbeat of the Serbian team. And it's allowed Team USA, specifically Kyrie Irving, to get to the basket. Well, now you got to make Teodosic defend. And you got to crowd him and pick and roll. Lay Thompson a three. How about the shooting of Team USA? You know, I can think back to the Finland game when Team USA struggled behind the arc. Steph Curry went 0 for 5, but since that point, really, they have caught fire. So like we have a double foul. I believe it's on Irving and Bogdanovich. Team USA now must keep their cool. One thing you'll see happen when a team in Europe is not doing well is they'll try to make it very chippy. We saw that from Lithuania, so you want to keep your cool now. Foul was not called on Kyrie Irving. It was Kenneth Fareed, his second. So two fouls each for Anthony Davis and Kenneth Fareed. Whistle and a foul away from the ball on DeMarcus Cousins. And that'll be number two on him, France. So now two each on each one of the three big men for Team USA, Fareed, Cousins, and Davis. Well, it's not Gasol. Gasol and Ibaka, so if Coach K chooses to play a little bit smaller, he can. We saw that at the end of the first quarter. Nearly turned over, and now Serbia gets it out to Teodosic, and they needed that. You notice they gave up the two at the rim for the three, and they got it. Milos Teodosic averaging 12 and a half points per game. Irving all the way. It's tipped in by Fareed. Once again, Irving causing havoc with the Serbia defense. Got to watch Bogdanovic because he doesn't mind trying to take over some. You see the spread there? Bircevic missing the three. And I think they're going to get Irving on that foul. Indeed, it was Irving just pushing his way through a screen. Yep, the Serbia system is four out, one in. Usually all four perimeter players can shoot it. So they really put pressure on you and they make you play the closeout game on skip passes where you got to recover back out to the weak side. Quick hands that time by Derek Rose forcing the turnover. How about the job Team USA has done on Teodosic? They, well, they, they, he hasn't really been involved. I, what you have to do with him is make him go right, pressure him in pick and roll, trap him some but he really hasn't been a factor minus that one open three 
He's the little girl with the curl. He can be very, very good sometimes, and he can also hurt his team. Easy basket down low for DeMarcus Cousins, and Serbia getting an easy basket by Bogdanovic. Remember, Serbia came, has come back in this tournament a number of times. Here's Cousins wrap around feed to Fareed. Good interior passing. That basket should have counted, Fran. It looked like the hand went through the net, didn't it? There's a great feed by Cousins in the mid post. Radu Litsa lowers the shoulder and he's called for the foul. Uh, that, you see that? That was almost, you could almost call that uh, unsporting. That was done by design. That wasn't an accident. Radulitsa lowering the shoulder on Kyrie Irving, who's been red hot. Rose misfiring on the jumper, and it's last touch by Team USA. A need USA basketball updates at your fingertips. Download the USA basketball app today for the latest news on the men's and women's national teams. Check out rosters, photos, videos, and more available at Google Play and the Apple App Store. How about for Sasha Georgievic? What's the strategy right now for Serbia? Got to keep plugging. You know, you've got you've got shooters. You've got a system that works. So you want to keep running your offense. Don't turn it over because that gives Team USA those uh, easy run out baskets. Spread it out. Hope that Team USA loses focus and then knock down your threes. Radu Lica drops it off but turns it over. Uh, good hands by Markovic. And more good hands. Rose to Kenneth Fareed. The Energizer Bunny from the start of camp, training camp in Las Vegas. First 15, 20 minutes of camp, it was pretty much a given. This guy would make the team because of his energy and hustle. He's become one of Coach K's favorites. Fred, in many ways, he is the prototypical international player. Well, it's interesting because from the four spot, usually that guy is a Kevin Durant, Rudy Gay, Carmelo Anthony, stretch the full floor kind of guy. So. It's actually a little different with him. What he is is it doesn't matter where you play basketball. A guy that plays with that energy and understands that playing hard as a skill has room on anybody's roster. A foul called on Team USA at this end of the floor, but last trip down it was on Bircevic, and he has three. The Elitsa driving at Davis. I'll tell you what, Clay Thompson just did a great thing. That's a tough pass right there. Rose gives it up. Three pointer by Curry, but look at Davis' fight. Last touched by Serbia. And if we were to pick an MVP of Team USA, I think he might be your guy. Well, he, he, he would be certainly one of my top candidates. Anthony Davis as well. James Harden's come on. You know what? Clay Thompson off the bench is back magnificent. But on that last defensive possession, Clay Thompson wasn't even worried about the basketball. He was playing shutout defense on Taya Dosage. Good scouting report D by that coaching staff at Team USA. Here's Fareed going to work on Bielitsa. Good defense by Serbia that time. And if the foul is on Fareed, it is number three. Well, Fareed's got to know better there. He got stuck underneath the rim. Serbian defenders just played vertical here, and Fareed's got to kick that out. See, there's really nowhere to go, and when you yell and scream in the NBA, sometimes they give you the call, but those defenders were in good position right there. That's a good no call. Fareed just got to kick it back out, get out of the three-point, out of the three-second lane, and then regroup. Well, it is number three on Kenneth Fareed. Team USA, both teams actually in the bonus, and so it sends Miroslav Radu leads into the line. He's had a very good tournament. There you see the fouls, like college. Five and you're gone. Radu Litsa is really a backup type player. But uh, more than likely, I don't see him in the NBA this coming year. I think he'll be in Europe somewhere. But he's helped himself in this tournament. He's been a low post threat. 
He's played professionally in the U.S., in Serbia, Turkey, in the German Bundesliga, and in Ukraine. He was part of, Ser of a Serbian team back in 2007 that beat USA in the uh, under-19 World Championships, and Steph Curry was on that USA team. In and out for Rudy Gay, and now an opportunity for Serbia to cut into this USA lead. You want to keep your focus if you're USA. You've controlled the last 10 minutes of this game, and there's another foul. You don't want Serbia to get back into the this game, especially on the free throw line. And that is number three on Anthony Davis. Listen, this has been a part of the, if you want to nitpick Team USA's 30-plus scoring margin over eight games, you know, one of the things that I, I know Coach K would tell you is that we could defend better without fouling. So well, that's three fouls on Anthony Davis and Kenneth Fareed as Taya Dosage with a pair of fouls misses the first attempt. Taya Dosage is one of those guys that when he's really good, he's really hard to guard, but he sometimes, on occasion, can keep both teams in the game. But you have to account for him because he can light it up quickly. Now, one of the reasons that Mike Krzyzewski, the Team USA, kept as many bigs as they did was in preparation for Spain. But obviously, the depth at the big position playing a factor in this game with the foul trouble to both Fareed and Davis. Thompson's three. No. Look at the follow-up by Gay. Rudy Gay started at the three-point line on that handoff, and no one checked him. Good, that's good defense. Thompson kept coming through both screens. Some guys hit the screen and it's like Velcro, but he fought through two screens to get back to Taya Dosich. Three to shoot. There's the big fella, Radu Litsa, called for the charge. We saw this in 2010, where Rudy Gay did a lot of garbage, a lot of dirty work for Coach Gay from that four spot. And there's a good example right there. Third foul called on Radu Litsa, and Serbia cannot afford to lose him. There you see the foul by Rudy Gay at the running start. Let me correct myself, that was the second foul called on Radu Litsa as Gay drills a three, he scored the last five points. Now went back and checked, Rudy Gay's about a 39% three-point shooter in FIBA play. That line is just close enough that he becomes a real threat. You know, in the NBA, it's a little lower, a little deeper. Can't give him that. Extra pass to Taya Dosich. Boy, DeMarcus Cousins is doing a phenomenal job at the rim. We're going to get the foul on Clay Thompson. Brad, how about the three-point shooting for Team USA in this one? Seven of 11. Well, they came in really starting to catch fire. 38%, five guys over 39. But this is a mid-range jumper for Rudy Gay in rhythm. We wouldn't call him a great shooter in the league, but through the years in FIBA play, he's been able to knock down that shot. The foul on Thompson sends Stefan Markovic to the line. 26-year-old out of Belgrade, plays in the Spanish league. Well, you knew Serbia would come out with lots of energy playing in this championship at the final of the FIBA World Cup. A Team USA weathering the storm early on, Fran, and the offense and the execution has been outstanding. Well, Kyrie Irving, really, when we look back at the end of this first half, it was the job he did really on his own for about a two-minute stretch that opened this game up. He's got a mismatch right now. Let's see how Serbia handles it. He Fires from behind the arc again. Kyrie Irving has 18 points in this first half. I don't know how you say no answer in Serbian, but right now they do not have an answer. Last touch by Team USA. Brand the U.S. trailed 15 to 7, and since then Kyrie Irving has dominated this game. And you know what? He's made that jumper all tournament long. Came in shooting near 50%. 
if you're David Blatt and David Griffith in the front office of the Cavs, LeBron, Kevin Love, you got to be excited about what you're seeing. Where does the offense come for Serbia? Markovic misses the three, and the U.S. will look to push again. Another mismatch. Harden, step back three for the U.S. The lead is up to 26. Team USA, nine of 13 from behind the arc. Team USA shooting 69% from behind the arc, Fran. They've opened up a 26-point lead. Uh, and they've done it really on both ends. Once Serbia established that quick start, Kyrie Irving took over the the ball movement, the one-on-one -on -one play has been excellent. The defense has been locked down, even through the foul trouble. And we've seen great efforts off the bench from guys like Irving and Thompson and, and certainly DeMarcus Cousins inside. Serbia trying to find an answer, and finally a three goes down by Bielica. At 6'10", he could be tricky to handle that time, and Cousins needed to respect that jumper. Now, Serbia was so good from behind the arc against France, 8 of 15. They're just 2 of 8 in this game to start as Irving turns it over. We remind you, ESPN2 brings you coverage of women's USA basketball tomorrow night, 7 Eastern. Team USA takes on Canada in an exhibition leading up to the FIBA World Championship in Turkey, a game that's also available live on Watch ESPN. Well, the best you can hope for right now if you're Coach Djordjevic is to cut into this lead and try to get it to within 15, I guess. How do you do that? Well, you first of all, you got to keep USA at a transition. And you you got really Team USA is just playing great one on one basketball. Look I mean, at Cousins. This look is, at the hustle by DeMarcus Cousins as they get the foul on Bielitsa. I mean, how do you guard Kyrie Irving when he's knocking down threes or James Hart? They don't play zone. I, I tried to find the clip of zone all tournament. They don't play zone. Their team defense, if you help too much, somebody else on USA gets a shot. So it's been a blitzkrieg, really. As DeMarcus Cousins goes to the line, Serbia in the bonus. Franny's got seven points, seven rebounds. And I've told this story before, but it bears repeating. I mean, he was a player that drove Jerry Colangelo crazy leading up to the 2012 Olympics, and he's played a huge role on this team. Well, he's maturing. Let's let's face it, you know, not always the easiest guy to coach, but that's okay. You know, he, he, he plays hard. His numbers are good every night in the league. And he's a young player. I think if you're Michael Malone and the Kings, so you don't want this if you're USA now. You want to finish out the half crisply, but if you're the Sacramento Kings, you got to love what DeMarcus Cousins has done here. They work it down low. Vladimir Stimats in the that. game. Battered away by Cousins. Here's Harden. All the way to the rim. And that started with DeMarcus Cousins again. He didn't leave his feet until he absolutely had to. That's good help, D, again. Three-point front rim by Kalinic. Another rebound by Cousins. And another three on the way by Curry. That might be his first basket. They've been doing this without guys like Davis and Curry and Rose doing much offensively. Off the drive, last touch, and good help defense by Kyrie Irving. Look at the leading scores for Team USA. Been an impressive first half. Serbia, they have so much pride in their basketball. It's, uh, you know, theoretically the best basketball in Europe, the best coaching, the smartest team. Not tonight. Kevin Connors, Fran Fraschilla back with you. The scene in Madrid, as you put it, Fran, a blitzkrieg by Team USA. Offensively, Serbia has had no answers. No, and uh, we've also seen, seen the depth of this Team USA team. Remember, this is supposed to be our C team, right? No Durant, no Paul George, no LeBron. 
Coach K and Jerry Colangelo picked this team. They went with size. They went with point guard play. Rudy Gay, who was the last guy added after the uh, withdrawal of Kevin Durant, the injury to Paul George. Bielitsa sees the free throw rim out. I mean, really, this is, in all honesty, Fran, absolute worst-case scenario for Serbia to give up 62 points in the first half. Team USA just really isn't missing. Well, remember, Team USA's been foul in foul trouble, too. So, you know, you can, can't say anything about FIBA officials in this game. It's kind of gone both ways. We said it would be called close. Hard and a three. The U.S. is 12 of 16 from three-point range. Very, very impressive. They have broken Serbia's will right now. That's not easy to do. Foul's going to be called on Kyrie Irving. And second I mean, this is call. too easy. James Harden, watch this. That's too easy. Remember, this Serbia team came into this final game really, really blitzing some good, good opponents. Greece, Brazil, France. And there you see the numbers. They started off slow. They picked up momentum throughout this tournament. Right now, they're very comfortable with that shorter international three-point line. What's, what's that a product of, friend? Is it, is it getting used to the distance? Well, that... I, I, you know, I think, I think the basketball, I, this is not an excuse, but the basketball is different. It's, all, it's, it's lighter, it's slicker. All teams have to deal with it. It's not like they're the Team USA is the only team, but I think it took a, a little bit of time to get used to that and just try to figure out the spacing on the floor. But, you know, when we saw Steph Curry miss five in a row against Finland, that's a small sample size. That's like a 300 hitter going 0 for 4. So eventually, you know, the odds were going to catch up that Team USA would do what they normally do. Guys like Thompson, Harden, Curry. And that's really been the case. Well, you saw Radulica on the bench with three fouls for Serbia. Steph Curry connecting on a pair of free throws. The lead is 31 as we're under a minute to go here in the first half from Madrid. Well, the defensive help has been outstanding. You can hear Tom Thibodeau. He's up. He knows what's coming. Good box out by Plumley. Curry the rebound. You hear Tibbs go, get up, get up. And Curry, a bit too fancy that time, shuffled his feet. And a travel, a rare turnover, just the fourth of this first half of the U.S. Tell you what, really good scouting report defense, I thought, in this first half. They've taken away the guys they needed to take away, including Te including Teodosic. I'll tell you what. I guess that's a foul. Now Mason Plumley, not used to the game being called that way in, in the U.S. As you see, they had Kristic, Milos Teodosic on the bench for Serbia. They started this game with such promise, 15 to 7 run to open the game. Teodosic had the ability to get into the paint, create for his teammates, but uh, the U.S. offense and the ability to knock down as many threes as they have has really thwarted what Serbia has wanted to do in this game. Now, if you're Team USA, you want the last shot of the half, obviously. And then if you're Coach K, I'd be interested to see what he says at halftime to a team that's played this well. Just don't want to turn it over. Harden fires the three, rebound to Serbia, and Kalinic gets it off in time. That'll count. Good heads-up play by Kalinic. He knows the clock in his head. Just a run out. That'll count. Well, a positive end to the first half for Sasha Djordjevic and Serbia, who started well and finished well, but in between, the U.S. opened up a 26-point lead.
Go, go, USA. What a half. The red, white, and blue had a 26-point lead over Serbia. Kyrie Irving leading the way with 18 points. James Harden has 17. Welcome into our Bristol studios. My name is Todd Grisham. Team USA began forming its roster back in January, but it turns out they weren't who we thought they were. LeBron and Carmelo elected not to play. So, too, did Kevin Durant and Kevin Love. And, of course, you remember the gruesome leg injury that Paul George suffered. But in the end, even at 50% capacity, Team USA has proven it's the best team on the planet. I want you to bring your bodies. I want you to bring your minds. And I want you to bring your hearts. Those three things have to happen every game. Team USA, they got all the pressure in the world to win these games. You got a chance to represent a whole country. And to be able to, you know, be that person to bring back that gold medal is a huge honor. It does give me goosebumps and chills thinking about, hopefully, kind of that vision of where we're going to be, you know, come the end of the World Cup. The United States about to clinch themselves Group C. Words can't explain it. I mean, to be a part of this atmosphere, just stuff you dream about. I have one gold medal already, but to win two, this can be huge. It's an honor. It's a privilege. The United States uh, cruising on its way toward a 5-0 and mark. It feels like no other. You know, you're not only just playing for yourself, you're playing for the whole country, and it's just an unbelievable feeling to get that opportunity. United States lob and Fareed with the jam. And so the United States to once again reach the semifinals. In order to win, you have to be worthy of winning. And what does worthy of winning mean? It means that you're playing as one, you're working hard together, you're unselfish. This group is worthy of winning. And the United States advancing to the gold medal game. Big time, though. Big time win. Big time team win. Trying to go for that goal. Next step. They have made it look easy. The United States owns the four highest points per game differentials at the FIBA World Cup among champions. This year's squad would rank second all time behind the 94 team led by Shaq. But none of these teams came close to the dream team in 92 at the Olympics in Spain. They defeated their opponents by an average of 44 points per game. Third place game, France and Lithuania. France down two, and this is Jeffrey Laverne. With just over six minutes to go down low, we're tied at 75. France pumped up later, tied at 80. Boris Diaw, nice up and under move. Diaw with 15 points. Nicholas Batum led the way for La Blue with 27, and there's Diaw again down low. That would make it a four-point game. The final 16 seconds saw 11 fouls and 22 free throws as France holds on to win it by two. Kenneth Free, the manimal, always energetic, always above the rim. He's got seven points. Kevin Connors, Fran Priscilla back with you. Team USA, a 26-point halftime lead. Moments ago, our Mark Stein spoke with one of the stars of Team USA, Kyrie Irving. Team USA down seven points early. Anthony Davis gets two early fouls. They're finding holes in the defense. Things didn't look good, and then you guys turned it around. How did you turn it around so quickly? Well, honestly, I don't think anything uh, didn't look good. Honestly, I mean, depends on the game, the way we start. We're all in this together. There's no such thing as a, you know, a bad start or anything for us. I mean, they, they were making shots. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. I mean, it's a championship game. Some teams start out that way. But for us, it was just about locking in on both ends of the floor. We picked it up on both ends. And, uh, you know, you know, we're up at half. So one more half to go. You personally, was, was just a couple days ago, you weren't even able to sit down on the bench during your rest periods. And you got 15 points in that first quarter. What are you seeing that you can exploit personally? Um, well, right now, I think we're just doing a great job just uh, spacing out, moving the ball really well, and, uh, you know, exploiting their, their weak points. And, uh, you know, us as a team, I think uh, we're doing a hell of a job on both ends of the floor. Thanks, Kyrie. Fran, I think the last part of that comment is, is right on the money, right? Well, that was classic player speak, if you will. He said all the right things, and he has, but throughout this tournament. But take a look. Irving and Harden, explosive during that USA run. Kevin, this was a 39-point turnaround. They were down eight at one point. They were up 31 late in the second quarter. Now for USA, you do not want Serbia to get back into this game, making threes, getting easy shots. 
Steph Curry off the mark. The 67 points scored by Team USA, the most that they scored in a first half in this tournament. They had 70 in the second half of the win over Slovenia and a good start for Serbia. Well, they went right at Cousins, who's starting the second half because Davis has the three fouls. Kyrie Irving answering. I thought for most of that first half, after the first couple minutes, Team USA's half-court defense was outstanding because they locked into the game plan of smothering those guards in pick and roll, protecting the rim as well. Kick ball, and it'll stay Serbia ball. Interesting friend, Kyrie Irving talked about after the signing of LeBron James. He admitted he shied away from being the face of the Cavaliers franchise. He said he didn't necessarily embrace being the guy every day. This tournament, this performance could help in the maturation process. Well, he's already a good NBA player, a great NBA player, but this is about winning now. Oh, that's not a, that is not, that is a down 26. We want to make sure things stay even, call because that is a charge. Take a look now. This is an easy call. It's going to come right at you. I think the Marcus Cousins was set. And they count the basket. What you want to do if you're USA is stay focused and lock in on that defensive end. See, and you don't got to get your offensive, re defensive rebounds. Cousins unable to. He's got two fouls now. Kevin, the, the only way Serbia gets back in this game, and it is possible, is if Team USA lo loses its defensive focus. Radulica misses and Cousins another rebound. What do you suppose Mike Krzyzewski told his team at the half? Well, I think what you, you know, those of us who coach in this situation, you just tell them to forget the scoreboard. Here's Cousins all the way, and he's fouled on his way up, and they'll that, call an intentional yes. foul, friend. And that's going to be a, a an unsportsmanlike foul. Teodosic, this is common for him. When things aren't going well, he'll, he'll be in the middle of it. I love that Cousins is just staying calm. The other day, we saw him almost react to, <laughs> to Valanciunas. So that was a foul on the way up. I don't think they called it an unsporting. But see, you don't want to bait yourself into getting into a back and forth game with the lead now. It was definitely a hard foul by Radulica. Well, I don't know that it was necessarily. Well, Cousins came down, right? In fairness, he right. hit Bielitz in the back of the head. As Cousins knocks down the first, he's up to eight points, nine rebounds in the game. And so it is an unsportsmanlike foul, Team USA should get this ball back. Now, if you're Team USA now, you want to maintain your composure. Serbia team, that is a very tough team. They play with a lot of pride. They did likely not take well to being blown out in that first half. There's Harden and lost it on his way up, but he regained it and laid it in. The U.S. lead is up to 73-45. Still eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Oh, good challenge. That might have been Cousins again. And they'll get a foul called on uh, Serbia. It's Kalinic. I think Radu Litsa may have had a case here, Fran. Let's take another look. Let's see. Uh, I, I don't know. They haven't called that much at the rim. Well, they've just called a technical foul. Now, let me make this point. Coach K has been extremely proud of the way this United States team has represented itself from the start of training camp. More than likely, they are going to win this game. What they don't want to do right now is get baited into anything that causes them to lose focus. Technical foul on Radu Litsa. 
You're right. We saw it get chippy in the Lithuania game. And that's how it should be. We're playing for medals here, you know? And this is a team with Lithuania, Serbia, Croatia. These teams have so much pride in their basketball. So the technical foul in international play is a personal foul. It's four fouls now on Radulica, who stays in the game. Here's Harden. No on the three, but the follow-up by DeMarcus Cousins. You love his effort. He needs to do his talking with his play right now, and that's what he's done. He's, he has really, really been the secret weapon today for Coach K, and particularly on the defensive end. Listen, he's playing a backup center in the NBA, so he, he ought to be doing this, but the effort has been phenomenal. Open three by Markovic. Look at who's there to get his hands on it. Last touched by Cousins, but Fran, he's been so active, and he's played a big part in this game because Anthony Davis has been in foul trouble. There's no question. And, it, you know, it, his effort has been exemplary the whole tournament. Remember, shorter game, you're playing 20 minutes, 18 minutes, 22 some nights. You ought to be able to give this kind of effort. But Team USA, by and large, has. Here's a three, a good looking stroke by Bielica. Now he's six foot ten and he's tricky because he can put it on the floor, which he did to start this second half. So you gotta play him honestly. Irving the rare miss fought for by Fareed. And it'll stay here. They get Bielica on the foul. Watch for Reed there. Got held from behind by Bielitsa. Easy call for the officials and plays with a smile on his face, doesn't he? You love guys that enjoy the moment. Here's Harden off the drive. Elbow jumper and James Harden continues to shoot it well today. Well, he took Teodosic that time to school, if you will. You don't want to give that up right there if you're Coach K. Easy bucket by Milos Teodosic, who Fran, for the most part, has been, he's got 10 points, but he's been held in check. No, he's been quiet. And more importantly, he hasn't been able to orchestrate any consistent offense in the pick and roll game. For Reed, no on the jump hook, but Cousins is fouled. And ESPN2 brings you coverage of women's USA basketball tomorrow night, 7 Eastern. Team USA takes on Canada in an exhibition leading up to the FIBA World Championship in Turkey. So what Coach K is about to do right now is Anthony Davis is going to come into this game. He did not start the second half because of the three fouls. And Cousins and Fareed have held the fort down. I mentioned earlier that from ownership right down to Coach Mike Malone in Sacramento, they were really anxious to see DeMarcus Cousins make this team. He made the team. Many thought he would be a backup. Insurance in case they played Spain. But he's more than earned his mark. Lane violation called on Serbia there. And we mentioned there's two members of the Sacramento Kings on this team with Rudy Gay and DeMarcus Cousins, the only team to have two players other than Sacramento, the Golden State Warriors. Now you want it to translate into some movement up, up the ladder in the Western Conference. Got some young guys like Stauskas and McLemore. Darren Collison joins them to play point. I know our buddy Chris Mullen doing a nice job in Sacramento. Good feed, unselfish play by Teodosic. Yeah, that was good team defense by USA, but Serbia moved the ball well, got him in a rotation, and Teodosic with a good, smart play. Now there's Harden taking it at the rim, and the foul be called on. Roscoe Kotic, our first time calling his name. Yep, he's a big banger. Doesn't play much, Kotic. 6'11", throws his body around. Going to make sure he uses all five of his fouls. Well, you mentioned a big body that doesn't play a lot. And in a 29-point game, friend, that could lend itself potentially to being a guy out there looking to commit hard fouls. Do you, do you now, consciously, as a, as a coach, <laughs> talk to your team? No, I, it, it, these guys know. I mean, they know what's at stake, and they know how hard Serbia plays. 
Cottage is a big guy out there. Coach Georgievich is trying to give get his team going a little bit. They've got foul trouble too with Radulica with four. So Cottage is a guy that's been around a long time. 33 plays at Red Star, one of the great, you know, through the years, one of the great teams in Europe. You know, you go to a partisan Red Star game, and it's like Duke Carolina. The the passion for Serbian basketball is really on a par with anything that you'll ever see in basketball. Kentucky basketball, Lithuania, Kansas Jayhawks. Nana Kristic knocks down the jumper. Well, the proud tradition, the proud history of basketball, Fran, uh, for Serbia and the former uh, Yugoslavia as a uh, that's amazing, really. It's a zone now for Serbia, yes. right? Yes, you almost never see this from Serbia. And as I mentioned, I tried to go back in all eight games prior to this, find some zone. They pressed a little bit, but this is just Coach Georgievich now reaching, looking for something to change the momentum. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention when Team USA shoots 11 of 15 from three-point range. In the first half, and there's Anthony Davis. First field goal of the game for, uh, of the game for Davis. Let's just watch this matchup between Clay Thompson and Taya Dosich because Clay Thompson loves this challenge. See, this is good disruption overall defensively. Three by Bogdanovich, drafted this past summer. By the Phoenix Suns, he played very well in the semifinal game as Irving is left open, and he knocks down a three. That three-point shot internationally for him has been an absolute layup in nine games. He's closing in on 60% behind the arc. Irving's up to 23 points, five of five from three-point range as Bogdanovich knocks down another. You know, we won't show the replay, but that was nice basketball. He came off the screen, and he just went against the grain, created a little space for himself. Irving, not again, yes again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable performance. And it couldn't come at a better time. Whistle and a foul on James Harden. Kyrie Irving has been nothing short of brilliant in this game, combining with James Harden for 49 points. Team USA comfortably in control here in the third. Team USA trailed 15 to seven midway through the first quarter. It is now a 91-59 lead. You know, what I, you know what I've been thinking about during that last timeout? My man David Blatt is X and an O in right now, putting stuff down on paper, because he has got three offensive weapons. He's trying to figure out how to get Kyrie in that spread pick and roll. New coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Long-time successful coach in Europe. He knows a lot of these Serbian players. And the situation that he steps into, not unlike what Eric Spolstra had in Miami, right? A coach unproven, at least in the NBA. Tremendous international experience, but unproven yeah. in the NBA taking over a Ferrari, right? Well, he's he's one of the he really is one of the, the great coaches in the world. There's some great European coaches. I think Ettore Ray Messina, who's going to be with the San Antonio Spurs, is going to be the next guy to get a head coaching job. But these guys can really coach. And it's neat to see someone who's put in the time, who deserves an yes. opportunity, get it. We remind you, Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell, 8 Eastern. The Yankees take on the Orioles. Derek Jeter winds down his Hall of Fame career, a game that's also available live on Watch ESPN. And you know, it, it's interesting because Serbia, I, I mentioned the Serbian coaches, Kevin, and uh, Serbian, they take a lot of pride in their basketball. They really do. They're some of the great coaches in Europe. And there are more Serbian coaches that have had success in other countries than probably any country in Europe. And uh, I think of my friend, the late Dave Gavitt, coach at Providence, the 
commissioner of the Big East, was really one of the first guys to connect with Serbian, or at that time, Yugoslavian basketball. Guys like Mirko Novosel and Alexander Nikolic. Coach Gavitt was later the Olympic coach, but he was one of those guys that the pioneers, the UB Browns, the Jack Ramseys, the Dave Gavitts, to bring American basketball to Europe. So many great friendships and connections came out of that. And now they have their own style of play, and more often than not, we steal from them nowadays. Bogdanovich drives, and he's fouled by Gay, who had the emphatic putback on the other end of the floor, Fran. And Rudy Gay, he's doing what he did in 2010 for Coach K. He's the, uh, he's the, the stretch four, small power forward, if you will. He took the place of what Paul George, how he would have played, Durant. And he's really, really filled in well. And he's playing with that chipped tooth as well. That's right. Four fouls on Rudy Gay. And, you know, to finish the point, we, we really in many ways started the summer with Team USA talking about the Paul George injury. And it started in a lot of ways on a negative note for Team USA. Uh, but to finish like this, and we yeah. continue to wish Paul George well and a speedy recovery, but to finish like this for Team USA, gratifying. We've got a lot of time to talk about it, but for yeah. Mike Krzyzewski, yet again, Fran, to galvanize his team in the face of adversity. Well, I talked to him in New York about this, uh, that this would be his most satisfying uh, win if they are able to hold on and win the gold and cer certainly right now it looks like it does i mean they're heading to 130 points but uh yeah i, I agree you know the guy is a, a hall of famer for a reason there's demar DeRozan with the finish another guy that's going to use this tournament to catapult himself first time all-star but uh, i think i think for jerry colangelo and coach k there was a period of time in late august where they did have some concern about the makeup of the team, but remember, we have a pool of 25 players at a time with which to pick our best 12. And even though this might not be the best 12, this is still a great 12. There's DeRozan, another basket. The other thing that has to be pointed out right now as Team USA blows this Serbian team out is, is the global game growing closer together? Or is Team USA on the strength of some of these performances extending the gap because Argentina's going down, Spain, you know, will still be strong, but maybe not with Pau on the downside of a great career. So it's up to the Serbias and the Croatias to develop those young players to challenge USA in the future, maybe Canada. But yep. cer certainly not Argentina. Jovic knocks down the jumper. The alley-oop to Anthony Davis. And Team USA hits 100, still with 140 to go in the third quarter. And let's forecast, let's look ahead here. Since you brought it up, who, who's the most likely challenger in addition to Spain in 2016? It's tough to say. You know, I think Spain certainly will be, certainly will be there if they qualify. But uh, nobody's really within striking distance when we put our best on the floor. And I'm surprised to say that because I thought the world was shrinking the gap, but we have the best players and the most best players in the world right now. One other thing, we're playing the game, maybe not as artistically as some of these other teams, but we don't have to play that way. and We don't have the time in training camps to create the continuity. But Coach K has got these teams to wear that uniform with pride, play great defense, and play together on offense. And it sounds like, in a lot of ways, that's a given, right? All of Most all of the uh, biggest stars in the world, most, not all, but most are American players. But it's not that long ago, Fran, that this USA basketball team finished sixth at the FIBA World Cup yes. and won a bronze medal in the Olympics. Well, we were in shambles after 2004. And it was embarrassing to go to Europe and talk to my European friends about it. But I love great competition, but you also want to see USA maximize the abilities they have. And Coach K has done that. Foul called on Nanad Kristich. And so it'll send Anthony Davis to the free throw line. Quiet game for Davis, but that uh, should not take away from what he's done in this tournament. He is 
a guy in many ways, Fran, who carried Team USA through the early play. Yeah, there you see what we were talking about since 2004. Coach K taking over that loss to Greece in the semifinals, the only loss. He said that was a real education that day. That was the day in the press conference where he said, well, number three from Greece is great. Number six, he didn't really know Papa Lucas or Diamantidis. And now when you see him in every press conference, hey, Teodosic is a great player, or, you know, Kuzminskis heard us. He's so much more conversant in the international game. And he's told me it's made him a better basketball coach at Duke. Good defense by Clay Thompson. 104 to 65 with still a quarter of basketball to play here. And we should talk about it. The, the, the final score here will take away somewhat uh, from, I should say, should not take away from what Serbia has done in this tournament. To get to this final friend is a remarkable achievement. I, I would agree. And the way they got here, you know, I mean, they blitzed three really good teams when you look at, you know, you know, Serbia, uh, excuse me, Greece. France, the way they dispatched those guys. Brazil came in as maybe the second or the third best team in the tournament. And plus 17 scoring margin. Thompson, those three games. Thompson challenging the three. Look at Derrick Rose, the dribbling exhibition, lobs it up. And now the run out of the easy basket for Kalinic. Still a full quarter to go here in Madrid with the game well in hand for Team USA. Here's Fareed trying a three. One of the few that have not gone down for Team USA and they'll get the foul on Anthony Davis and that is number four. I think Davis was held down. You're right. Yep. Get a chance to shoot a couple free throws. Anthony Davis is going to team with Omer Ashik and Ryan Anderson on that front line in New Orleans this year. That should be a formidable front line. to get everybody healthy back in the backcourt, and they play through the low post, and, or I should say that front line, they have a chance to make some improvement. Strength of that Pelican team is that front line. Three quarters in the books for Madrid. And Team USA comfortably in control en route to a gold medal. Kevin Connors, Fran Trishilla back with you. Team USA averaging 101.5 points per game in this tournament at 105 after three quarters. The shooting has been spectacular. 57% from the field. 57% from three-point range as well. They took this game over midway through the first quarter, and they've never looked back. But it was a little spooky there early on as Serbia got off to that hot start. Got Team USA in foul trouble. Jump hook. There's Fareed. His move. Last 20 or so games of the regular season in Denver. Kenneth Fareed really became an offensive threat more than just the energy. But he loves that jump hook over the left shoulder. Take a look. That's become a money shot for him. Another one of these USA players, as we saw in 2010, that will come out of this tournament with uh, renewed confidence. You'd have to think the way he's handled every press conference, Kevin, that he already had a lot of confidence. It's just that the world didn't know it. Well, he really is a remarkable story, a guy that was overlooked by many of the big colleges. Tip up and in, and a nice effort by Kalinic. But Fareed going the route to Moorhead State, became a star four-year player there in college, and then member of the all-rookie team in 2012, and he's emerged as one of the really nice players for the Denver Nuggets as Clay Thompson misfires on the three. Actually, Denver's got to make a decision on him at the end of this month. As to whether they'll let him be an unrestricted, or excuse me, a restricted free agent. 
They have till October. Uh, did I say next end of next month? Yeah, end of October. Three pointer on the way by Beercevic. And Al Farid leading the break. Thompson free throw line jumper is smooth. Well, we've said it so many times, but Clay Thompson been one of Coach K's best two way players in this tournament. Bogdanovich has gotten a little bit of the taste of, Bogda of uh, Thompson's defense in the last few minutes. Here is Bogdanovich off the dribble. Well, friend, you mentioned the name Jerry Colangelo. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the job that he's done in concert as Fareed misses the dunk, but he's fouled on his way up. And the job that he's done in concert with Mike Krzyzewski, as we see the last three major international yes. tournaments, all gold for Team USA. How would you characterize well, what Jerry Colangelo has done? I'll tell you what Coach K told me in New York. He said, I can be replaced. He said, they'll hire a really good coach. He said, but Jerry Colangelo can't be replaced because he's more than, he's been more than Coach K's collaborator on the basketball matters. You think of the fundraising, the funding, the corporate sponsorships, the Nike deals, the Tiffany deals, building a new facility in Tempe, Arizona. Jerry Colangelo has been a team owner in the NBA and in Major League Baseball, and he gets all of that. And Coach K just told me, he said, I don't know that there's one person that's going to ever be able to duplicate what Jerry Colangelo has meant to USA basketball in the, in the last eight years. So that's coming from Coach K, not me. And uh, But those two guys have made an incredible team, obviously, as they put together this juggernaut. Good drive by Bogdanovich, who's played well here in the second half. Right now, we're in NBA exhibition garbage time. Team USA has proven their point. As Clay Thompson drills another mid-range jumper. How about, how about the kudos to the players? Obviously for all the nations, but for Team USA, right? These are all multi-millionaires, Fran, who play a long NBA season to commit to playing this summer for Team USA. Yeah, it, well, and I think it goes back to J Jerry Colangelo and Coach K. They've restored the pride in wearing the USA on that jersey. And uh, it's something that many of us in the basketball world, nice pass, took for granted for a long time. And it took some poor performances, both on and off the floor, uh, on the part of some USA teams, to change things, shake up the culture. And uh, we were a part of being around these guys at training camp and on the exhibition tour, and they've handled themselves incredibly. They have healthy respect for their opponents. They know they're a great team, but they never really, you know, came across as such. They went about their business game to game, took every team seriously, and uh, they've been ready to play for the most part, night in, night out, over nine games. Here's Clay Thompson That's ridiculous. again. Yeah, I mean, the shooting. That's ridiculous. We saw. <laughs> We've seen Thompson now and then DeRose in the previous possession. The shooting for Team USA, 59%, Fran. Yeah, I didn't have teams do this when we used to practice 5-on-0. Oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> you know, Kyrie, you got to give Kyrie Irving a lot of credit uh, in this game at DeMarcus Cousins because I thought those two guys cracked this game wide open, particularly Kyrie on the off offensive end midway through that first quarter. Now, there's no question about it. 26 points for Kyrie Irving. Six of six from three-point range. Ten of 13 from the field. That international, that's that's that international game we've gotten so accustomed to. Drive baseline, look for the drift in the corner. Rudy Gay spotted up. Corner three, we call it, right, the NBA. But Clay Thompson knows when he drives baseline, he knows where his bailout passes are. Here's Taya Dosich, second effort. Uh, good. Oh, they say he went through the rim. They're going to count that basket. They said, uh, was it Plumley? maybe? It was Plumley. Yep. You can bat it off the rim, but you can't go through the rim or the netting. Adam Silver, I know you're in Madrid, but change that rule. That goaltending, knocking that ball off the rim is a great rule. 
I think he'd be great in the NBA in college. I totally agree. We've talked about that a lot. Yep. I don't love all the FIBA rules, but that is one that needs to come to the U.S. as Rudy Gay drives and connects on another easy layup, tying the output to Team USA, the high score that they've had all tournament, and we still have five minutes to play. Teodosic, good-looking feed to Radulica, and that combination has really been outstanding for Serbia in this tournament. It has. It really has. Teodosic... He suffered an ankle injury two, two weeks before the start of the tournament. Wasn't really himself. He played great from the round of 16 to the semifinals today. He was rendered ineffective by good, solid team defense. Scouting report on Taya Dosic is force him right. I guess that ball was on the way down before it hit the rim. But force him right, trap him in pick and rolls, take away his vision. Take away his ability to make plays for his teammates. I think by and large that was accomplished. Off the set inbound, Plumley fouled on his way up. That's a bad foul, too. A dangerous one, yeah. A guy can get hurt. On well, a reminder, Monday Night Football brings you a meeting between two reigning division champs. The Eagles take on Andrew Luck and the Colts tomorrow night, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Now remember, Serbia is going to celebrate the heck out of this silver medal now. I mean, this is a huge deal for a country of seven million people. Well, we saw France celebrating a bronze medal yesterday. No, no question. A gigantic deal, and so many of these nations, really with the exception of Spain, I think you'd agree, came into this tournament, and if you told them at the start of the tournament you would win a silver medal, they'd sign up for that. No, you know, no question. Everybody was playing for the bronze. Everybody was playing for bronze until France knocked Spain out very unexpectedly, but very decisively as well. I've got a question for you as we see Andre Drummond in the game. There needs to be an MVP of this tournament given out. Man, you know, I think it's, I'm gonna go with James Harden. I'm gonna go with James Harden. I think, I mean, there's three or four guys I'd love to, I'd love to give it to Fareed just because of the energy he established, but unless they go on the one game. Backdoor alley look. Up. Nice by Kalinic from nice. Teodosic. Yeah. A little too little too late, but nice look. I go back and forth all the time, you know? It was Davis, Fareed, Harden. You know what? I'm gonna go with Kenneth Fareed overall, just because early in this tournament, Drummond got his money's worth there. <laughs> just claps his hands. You don't wanna mess with Andre Drummond right now. No, you don't. 270 pounds, just watch, he'll just shove Kalinic out of the way. You know, I'll, I'll get killed on Twitter for saying for Reed, but I'm going to stick with my guns because, you know what? As a coach, you, you had, his energy rubbed off on everybody from the very first game. And although he's been a little quieter since then, the tempo was established from the very start. Listen, if, you, if you've watched all these games as you have, you've broadcasted all the games <laughs> as Rose is short on the layup. If anyone kills you for picking Kenneth Fareed, they haven't been paying attention because Fareed well, has been a double-double in almost every single game. And you look at what he's done, Fran, in this tournament. He's been the energizer buddy, as you called him. Yeah, he really has. And again, I'll get back to what you said earlier because he has not been the prototypical power forward and fever play because usually that's the stretch four man, the three-point shooter. They had to play a different way with the injuries and the, the withdrawals of the KDs. And uh, he's been as big a surprise as anybody. I don't think there's any question about that. Here's Derek Rose. He's been working so hard on that jumper. Yep. That's the one area he has struggled. I think it's been great for D. Rose to get back in the swing of things, get some extra minutes on the court. He hadn't played in really very much in two seasons. As Drummond challenges uh, the shot at the rim. I thought in reading some of the quotes from Derek Rose, saying that he's been working, he's, he's had a little bit too much elevation on the jump shot. He's tried not jumping quite as high on the shot, but yeah. he's re reminding himself as much as anybody, I'm still a great player. It's all mental with him. I mean, the fact that he's been on the court, uh, you know, it's been a positive. Vladimir Stimac with the basket. He's a Lithuanian Serbian, big, strong kid. He's kind of a fun-loving guy. He gets on the board. He'll be in the box score. 
someday. This, this team, by the way, the Serbian team that'll win the silver, they will be treated as heroes back in Belgrade and around Serbia. They'll forget this score. It was a first round, or maybe let's say it's let's say it was a third round knockout to the heavyweight champ, okay? Team USA knocked them out at the end of that first quarter. But that having been said, this is a historic moment for, as I've said, a country that absolutely loves its basketball. Rose nice throws it up yep. and nice redirection by Andre Drummond. Kevin, in 2002, with uh, Yugoslavia beat Team USA in the World Championships in Indianapolis. They were still called Yugoslavia at that time, but my Serbian friends remind me that the entire team was Serbian. By that time, the countries had started to split apart. Croatia went its own way, Slovenia. But this time, first meeting. Look at Jovic on the alley up to Stimac. Yep. And Serbia hasn't given up. They Again, they recognize the challenge here, but they played very well, and they're still into it. I have Ste watch the steal. And then Vladimir Stimac, who plays in Germany for Bayern Munich. He's not the goalkeeper, by the way. He's their power forward center. Got a chance to spend a lot of these time. There's about 60 players in this tournament that were at the Reebok Euro camp, the European version of the Chicago Combine. So many of these Serbian kids I've watched and coached for a number of years. Time flies as they hit their late 20s and early 30s. Nice lob. But uh, it's fun to watch these European players grow up and turn out to be really good European stars. And in some cases, guys like Dragic and Batum and, you know, uh, Serge Ibaka become really good NBA players. Jumper goes down for Roscoe Kotic. He's not just in the foul, people. See? Big fella. I stand corrected. <laughs> Here's Curry left open. Steph Curry, another three. Man. The 15th of the game for Team USA. Amazing performance. Trying to figure out ways that Serbia could stay close today. I thought maybe if they spread USA out, executed their offense, make a lot of threes. But Kyrie Irving did damage to that game plan. Well, the high of any team in this tournament is 128. Brazil hung 128 on Egypt in pool play. One more basket from Team USA, and they will set the new mark. Curry, no, but Andre Drummond will do so. 129 points for Team USA. You know, this reminds me an awful lot of 92 and 96. That's the scary part. That's why I say, you know, the world basketball is more popular than ever around the world, and there's some outstanding young international stars. But we are developing, because of this USA basketball team, the LeBrons and the Kobe's, the Carmelo's, awful lot of young players in high school and college right now want to wear that USA jersey, and that's something else that's changed in the last eight years. Well, I mentioned this to you in, in pool play. I had the chance to chat with Jim Tooley, CEO of USA Basketball, and he highlighted to me that at every level of international play right now, Team USA is the number one ranked team in the world. Yeah, and that's because we've started to make the concerted effort to put together teams of guys that want to represent the country. And you see the happiness right now as time runs down. Now the folks in Madrid coming to their feet in recognition of both of these teams. Serbia, an outstanding effort getting to the championship game. They led this game by eight points in the first quarter. But Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Team USA led a dynamic, spectacular shooting performance. And Team USA are the gold medal winners of the 2014 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Brand, nice appreciation from both teams here, acknowledging the efforts. And for Team USA, hard as this is to imagine when you think of the domination for Team USA throughout the world, 
It's the first time Team USA has won consecutive FIBA World Championships. And well, keep in mind, for a very long time, we sent college players. That changed in 94. 98, we sent uh, the equivalent of D-League players. 2002, things started to unravel. Coach K took over in 2006. Only loss suffered to Greece. And now, uh, a juggernaut. 129 to 92, Team USA champions of the FIBA World Cup.